Welcome to American Changer's video on how to convert your old row machine to upgraded American Changer components. This is most likely what your row BC1400 looks like now. We are going to help guide you through the removal of these components and the installation of your new kit. If you have any questions during this video, please call 954-917-3009. Let's begin. Determining if your cabinet has welded or non-welded brackets is an important step. Here is Rupert walking you through how to identify if your machine does or does not have studs holding brackets. Now to determine if you have a non-welded cabinet or a welded cabinet, if you look inside this cabinet, which is welded, you'll see the welded brackets. And these will not interfere any of the components. Thank you, Rupert. Now that you know if your cabinet has welded or non-welded components, unplug your machine, put on those safety glasses, and let's begin removing your old row components. So today I'll be showing you how to cover a BC1400 to a BC1400A. First, you're gonna need your safety glasses on. When you go to the machine, turn it off, disconnect it from the outlet. Then you wanna take these two latches off, Start by tilting the right up towards you, twist it down towards you at an angle, and then twist off. Now for the bottom one, you're going to tilt up and out. Like so, take your 5 sixteenths nut driver to take these brackets off. Now, if you, you have a welded cabinet, you do not have to unscrew them. They'll be welded, they will not interfere with any of the components. So unscrew your hex nut. Put that aside. Remove your hoppers. Tilt it back towards you. Up. Same goes with the second one. Two, out. Now take your three eighths and unscrew the top of the dispenser. Disconnect the harness, push it back, it's the top of the way, tilt your dispenser straight up, now you're going to go from the bottom, press it up, and then towards the right, get out of the bracket, turn it towards you, now. so unscrew it, Take your 11 30 seconds and unscrew these brackets. Like I said before, if it's welded, it will not interfere with the new components. Alright, unscrew this bracket with 1132 socket. Now we're going to unscrew the bottom dispenser holders with 1132s. Set them aside.
Now, we're going to unscrew this bracket and the hose can wire harness. Side. Now we're going to take a flat head screwdriver to remove this connector. Now what you want to do is take your flat head screwdriver, put pressure in and up. Do the same thing in the back as well. And it'll come up. Cut your zip ties. Move the harness. Disconnect the um, disconnect the connector. Disconnect the out of service light harness. Set this one aside. Take your core wrench, get the driver, unscrew the screw on the bottom of the filter cover. Maybe one on top as well. Screw that. Now you're exposed to your filter. With this model, I, I do have nut, um, nut uh, connected the wire. In your case, um, you will have to cut it. Make sure your power is off. Double check. Cut the black and white wire. Not driver, unscrew the ground. Then disconnect this connector. Put the flathead, put pressure in and up the other side as well. Remove the filter bracket. Now take your channel locks and we're going to remove the cable stopper. Now on this cable stopper you're going to put pressure here and on the bottom Down now towards you. Now take your power cord, get it through the hole. Now we're gonna take the top stopper out. You're gonna want to put your power right underneath it, so you can put pressure underneath, and then just twist it out. And now. Get our 1132s and screw this L bracket. Get out, put it aside. control panel out disconnect your harnesses and take it off the P clamp all the way 
out. Start by unscrewing the corns. And that screw to the ground off. Now, if you have a BA, like so, um, repeat this process. Now, if it's MEI, you will have to um, unscrew two screws that hold the MEI. Once, once that's loose, disconnect your harness from the MEI and slide out. Now, for the BA, you could use your hand to unscrew it. If it's too tight, use your channel locks. Disconnect your BA. Feed the connector down. Move the latch up, disconnect your cash box, move that aside, lift the bottom up and out. Disconnect your stacker connector. Take your quarter inch nut driver, screw the bottom screws. Now before you pull it, you're going to want to put your left hand on the back of the motor. There's a latch behind it. Pull this backer out towards you. And then hold it like so. And push out. And then drag it out. Now you want to disconnect your harness from the power supply. Get off the clamp. I'm gonna take the top of the harness, pull it out. Make sure you pull off the two as well from the stacker, the VA, or if you have an MEI, it will be the same process. We're gonna take this bracket. This is most common on the MEIs, but you just unscrew it from the top, light it up. Now, we're going to take the power supply bracket off, you're going to take your 516 screw the top screw. Slide this back towards you. Up and out. Like so, take your 1132s, unscrew this bracket. Take out any <laughs> screws or nuts in the way. Now you want to take this bracket off as well. Alright, so with the open wrench 1132, it's going to unscrew the back one from your hex driver. Take these two off. Side. 
also want to take this one off as well. Kind of screwing this off. It's 1132 socket. Alright, so I'm gonna show you how to take the out of service light with the bracket we're gonna have to take it off use your flathead screwdriver pry it off Save this one as well. Take just the two top screws off, coin cut. So now we're going to remove this flapper piece out of the coin cup, take the top piece off. Now, locate where the vent part of the pin is. Take your channel locks, straighten the pin. Like so, and the other side comes out. Flapper, take this piece and the top piece, put it back together and put it back on the machine. Now put your coin chute back together, take your nuts, hex nuts, screw them back together using your 1132 socket. Socket. And in the bottom, you have your BA retainer bracket. Remove that. Now, since this is a BA, it does have a big opening for the validator. We're gonna have to replace the front face with this bracket. If you have an MEI, it should come with a small cutout already and you can skip the step. So I'll be showing you how to change the BA faceplate with the MEI faceplate. Now, I do recommend to people, especially this machine will be inside the wall, um, have one person hold the screw outside while the other is unscrewing the nuts. 
So on the inside of the cabinet, we're gonna unscrew the six hex nuts. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we take the new MEI faceplate. Here is what your cabinet should look like after the removal of the old row components. Let's get started on installing your new, upgraded American Changer internal components. So here's the overview of the front of the cabinet. Here is the MEI um, faceplate with the hole in the front smaller than the BA. So we're gonna go ahead and put the out of service light. Now in order to put the out of service light, you're gonna need a half an inch drill bit, preferred um, cobalt um, drill bit in order to go through the stainless steel. All right, so you take your half, half an inch drill bit, screw the out of service light hole, to make it wider. Now take the clip that holds the lights towards the back. And so then make sure that you hold the light from the other end. To put pressure in there, take your flathead screwdriver. take the universal board sliding bracket open it up with these two pins kind of press down on them slide it up put the universal bracket with the rails to the side and then you're gonna slide this side in, making sure the three screws are straight, the three nuts are facing on top. Place it where it clips. Now take your hopper bracket, like so. Just cut out facing the back. And your nuts facing up towards the right. The right side rail, the existing with the notch on the top right. Place it inside. Go, go through the other side. Put the hex on. 
leave them loose for adjustment. Now this one without the notch goes on the left side. Bracket. Make sure it's loose. Enough for adjustment. Take your hopper plate. Make sure this cutout is facing the left side. Put it on top. It will be in slotted inside the stuff sticking out. Take your hex nuts. Screw them on. Make sure they're loose enough for adjustment. Take your screws with the round head and screw them on on each side. Take your screwdriver to screw them on. Sure they're not tightened, should be loose enough to adjust for later. Now use the wrong Phillips head. Screwdriver. And screw them on the left side. Leave loose for adjustment. Take your leveler with when it's a non welded cabinet, you have adjustments here, here to slide it up and down, as well as down here. Up and down, you have these four screws you could adjust up and down. You have three screws over here from left and right as well as these that are here and make sure that your rails make sure your rails are loose and not over tighten to adjust left and right Make sure it was leveled, tighten all the screws and hex nuts.
make sure you have clearance here to see the screw through. If not, readjust. Take the other end of the universal board on the side, slide it in, connect it back together, like so, push all the way in, and slide it out. Make sure it grabs. Slide your universal board out. Connect your photo service light. Harness and then feed it up through the left corner. Connect your white wire with your yellow wire from the harness to the universal board. Connect the brown with the red turn off now use the wrong Phillips head screwdriver and screw them on the left side For adjustment, take your leveler with when it's a non welded cabinet, you have adjustments here, here to slide it up and down, as well as down here. Up and down, you have these four screws you could adjust up and down. You have three screws over here from left and right as well as these that are here and make sure that your rails make sure your rails are loose and not over tighten so just left and right sure it was leveled, tighten all the screws and hex nuts. Make 
making sure you have clearance here to feed the screw through. If not, readjust. Take the other end of the universal board on the side, slide it in, connect it back together, like so, push all the way in, and slide it up, make sure it grabs. Now take your other service, light harness, take the universal board out, feed the connector. Put it back, connect this end to the other service light. Make sure your orange from the harness is connected to the white on the light. Sorry, your orange from the harness and red from the light. And then your brown to your white. Take your other end, connect it. Take your validator harness, DV harness, this end goes onto the board. So take one of your Harper harnesses feed it through the back, connect hopper out, which is your left hopper on the first one, take your other harness, feed it through the same hole on the left, and this would be your second hopper on the right. That's the side, right side. Now you're gonna take the new powder cord and feed it through the top. Feed it all the way to the left. The holes. Take this end, disconnect take off the clear protector unscrew your line your line is your black wire your neutral is your white unscrew that Um, take your ground, see the green one, screw it back on, put back the clear lens cover for your terminals, back on, take your 1132 socket, screw on the extended ground onto the plate with the hex nut and the 
provided. Take the provided ladder clamp, peel off the back end, place it onto the side of the plate. Like so, now take your communication harnesses, all four of them, and tie them up to the ladder clamp. Take your P clamp and hex nut and clip it onto your power cord and screw it on. Now, if it's a welded cabinet, you're gonna use, you're gonna run this cable the same way, but you're gonna use the ladder clamps. open wrench for this one now you can slide this in universal board in like so so take your p-clamps and run the rest of the power cord and if you have a ladder clamp a uh, welded cabinet use the ladder clamps so you do it right here Existing um, power stopper. Place it on the top of the power cord. Like so. Take your channel locks. Squeeze the power cord in. As well as put pressure down. It should clip right on. Move this power cord out the way. Like so. Take the new funnel. Place it, make sure there's no wires on the way that will pinch. Take the two screws provided, the round head. Screw on the new funnel. Your hopper plates, set them above the at least six holes for each. Take your right hopper harness towards the right. Make sure it corresponds to the right one. Set, screw, place. Right 
let's take your cobra. Make sure this is your poetic coin shoe. Make sure it's on the right side. Do this back. Sorry, the hopper plate. more clay with the harness. So take that sucker off. Alright, you can just walk it out of the way. The hopper. This is your uh, coin shoe. Going this way. It's your hopper extension. Connect it. Now take the fully assembled validator and slide it. Bracket. Take the locking screw and nut out of its place. Feed it through the hole. If it's too tight, use your screwdriver. Make sure it's fully in. Take your hex nut and your lock harness. slightly loose so you could add the other screw and nut. Here's an overview of the BC1400A kit.